Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. So if you saw our big haul lately, I'll put a link up above and down below. Um, I picked up a couple of food items to restock backfill our pantry. And part of that was the um, Idaho Spuds, right? De dehydrated hash brown potatoes. And the other part was some big boxes, big boxes of Raisin Bran for fill. And what I'm going to do to keep any rodents or insects or anything else from messing with that stock is I'm going to vacuum seal them into half gallon jars. This is predominantly what I use our half gallon jars for is for food storage. Um, I don't can in them. You, there is nothing approved for canning other than water bath canning like fruit juices. Okay. We don't use those. So it's not something I ever use, but I do love these for dry food storage because you can see what's in there. Things can't get into them. Um, I'm very visual, so it really appeals to me. And they're, you know, short of earthquake proof. They're, they're pretty solid. So today we are going to do this. Now, how I do this dun, 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 is I have my, <clears throat> pardon me, my handheld uh, vacuum sealer. Okay. So I use that and then I use my jar attachments, which there we go. So I'm going to be using my wide mouth jar attachment because these are wide mouth jars. They also have the small mouth uh, jar attachment. I'll put a link down below for those also. That is something that comes in and out of stock on a fairly regular basis. So you want to, pe if it's not available now, you definitely want to keep an eye on it. I use my funnel, my canning funnel, just because let me, let me bring you up here. I use my canning funnel because it helps get these things into the jars a little bit easier, a little less spilling, right? So I can just take this. It is actually easier just to completely open the container. There we go. Okay, and then aim and pour. Yeah. So I think I can fill these. I think that like one box equals one and a half. Let's see. I don't think it makes up two full ones. Whoop, whoop. You know, the best laid plans. Okay. Oh no, it comes pretty close. Pretty close to two full uh, jars. Okay, let me get this cleaned up. There is construction going on today. They're putting Tyvek in the, on the outside walls, the exterior walls of the house. So um, what I'm going to do is get these all filled up and try not to spill anymore, right? Pretty much a given. If you put me in the kitchen, there's going to be a mess. But it'll be good. It'll taste good, right? Okay, so I'm going to work these in, and once I get these, all these jars filled, also, I want to show you a little something, something. So we just poured these in, did nothing else, right? So I'm just going to take this very carefully, and now I can fit that much more into the jar. So you want to shake these down, you know, make the most use out of them that you can. So three of these containers, three of, three of these containers, right, um, fit into five half-gallon jars. And that's taking them, tamping them down making them all fit. Okay. And so that works out really, really well. Um, and like I said, you know, moisture can't get to these mice can't get to these bugs can't get to these. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I love storing food this way. So now we're going to take the jars, you know, something I didn't mention that I'm sure somebody will educate me on. Um, before you do this, you want to wash these jars. <laughs> okay. I think it's kind of obvious, but somebody will say something. So um, you want the jars to be clean and completely dry. The completely dry is imperative. So then you put the food in them. Now we're gonna now we're gonna vacuum seal them. So you put the lid on, okay, and then you put that thing on top. And now we're going to suction. Did you hear how that changed? And there's the suction noise, okay? So those are now, nope, they're not gonna mess with me. There's always one that's gonna mess with me. 
Okay, come on out of here. There we go. We're going to try this again, okay? Also, you'll notice I've been taking my hands around the top in case any hash brown debris got on there. So now let's try it again. Might have to go a little bit longer. Okay, so we're going to push it all the way down. We're going to put that on there straight. Nope, I don't think that did it. Oh, it did. Okay, there you go. You'll learn to listen to it, and maybe you'll listen to it better than I do. Um, so now that's on there. See, I'm picking it up by the lid. Now it's on there. And we're still going to put the rings on it, though, okay? Just because we want to make sure that that stays clamped down there as much as possible. Now, I save the boxes that these jars come in. They're one of the few jars I will buy brand new. I save the boxes because that is how I store them. So we're going to keep moving right along here. Let's do it again. See if I can do it right. I just keep this plug. I just keep this plugged in because I had it plugged in and fully charged, and then I took it off the charger for a couple days, and I just didn't want it to, you know, wind down. So I don't know if it makes a difference. We'll find out. Nope, it did. Okay. So there we go. And now we're going to do that. Okay. Now that is how I vacuum seal the hash browns for my long-term storage. Obviously, when you store them, you're not going to put them where they're getting direct sunlight. But for right now, as I get these done, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to finish vacuum sealing these ones. And then I will come back and we will tackle the Raisin Bran. Now it's time to fill the Raisin Bran. So these boxes have two bags in it. Oh, okay. So it's supposed to be like twice what you would get at least, you know, if you buy a single box at the grocery store. Have scissors, we'll travel. So now we're gonna do the same thing. Okay. Come on. Yum. I'm not a big cereal eater, unless it's dry. I'll munch on it dry. Yes, I will. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. Okay. Then we're going to move on to the next one. So we can get whoop, one bag into two jars. That's good to know. Good to know. I never paid attention before. Okay. So now we will do the same thing. Hear how it did that gurgling thing? Yeah. So that to me tells me it's done. There you go. So now we'll do the same thing. Dun, dun, dun. So obviously if you have kids that plow through um, cereal, this is not real practical unless you're majorly buying in bulk. But when you're looking at like Phil and I, um, number one, I don't really eat it. And number two, he does occasionally. So... Buying it in bulk like this, saving money, um, buying it in bulk like this, and then vacuum sealing it to use as time goes on just makes more sense. Because have you ever had stale cereal? Ooh. Okay, there's that gurgle. There we go. She's on there good. And now we're going to put the ring. So using these half gallon jars for storage like this, come on, Lise. There you go. Um, really, really helps extend 
the life of a number of foods and keep them pest free and keep your pantry pest free. That's kind of, you know, the big win-win here. When you can find it on sale, when you can buy it in bulk um, and find a way to put it up where it's not compromised, this is fantastic. I use these half gallon jars for vacuum sealing cereal, um, hash browns, crackers. Crackers are great. Crackers are really great. Those will literally last you a few years in there. Um, I've never had the cereal last a few years, but um, you know, it's just because he goes through it. Um, hash browns are good for a couple of years because they're dehydrated. So you're looking at two plus years that those hash browns will be good for. Um, any kind of dry product. And then, well, not any kind, but you know, dry products. Now, what I also vacuum seal are things like um, chocolate chips, peanut butter chips, vanilla chips. Those do great vacuum sealed. Any kind of chocolate like that does great vacuum sealed because if you were to just leave it, chocolate develops over time um, kind of a white powdery outside. I don't think it makes it bad, but some people, you know, so um, I vacuum seal all of our chocolate like that for future baking projects. If you want to keep your sweet tooth handy, then these are fantastic. You can store Hershey Kisses in them. You can store um, some cookies, okay? I wouldn't store all cookies, but some cookies um, are good. And again, it's not something that I've had long, long term, um, but it's something that I know is good for six plus months uh, vacuum sealed like this. So if you find a really great sale on your favorite cookie, it's worth experimenting and seeing if it lasts and for how long. When I am completely done making the mess that I'm making, instead of writing on the lids, okay, I am going to get a sticker and put it on here, or I'm going to put a sticker on the box, and I am going to mark the date that I put these up um, and the year, you know, the month and the year, so that I can keep track of how long it lasts us and, you know, know how good it is, you know, when we do finally open it. Um, I don't use the top of the lids for marking when I'm vacuum sealing because, um, like I said in a recent canning chat, I am of the opinion that vacuum sealed lids are still good to pressure can with. Not water bath, pressure can. I love construction time. So um, I don't want to mar the top of the lids, you know, on the off chance that I do need them or have to use them or want to use them for pressure canning. I would not water bath with them, but water bath is a little more temperamental than pressure canning. And the reason again why is because there was no heat involved with using these. Uh, it's just air compression, sucking the air out. And I do not believe that it compromises the compound uh, the same way that heat does. So you can debate that or not. I'm not gonna debate it, that's just my belief. Um, you know, when possible, if possible, always use new lids. Right now, it's kind of not always possible. I actually had somebody ask, is it worth doing when you're having to use up your canning supplies with as hard as they are to get lately? And that's a judgment call, totally a judgment call. For me, it's worth it because I'm saving money being able to put this stuff up. It is worth mentioning. If your cereal has nuts in it, I would not do this. Nuts can go rancid over time. If you're planning on using it sooner than later, then probably you'll be okay. But if you're looking at some kind of longer term storage, um, nuts can go rancid. And so it might not be a good idea to use them vacuum sealing for long term storage if your cereal has nuts. So two of the two bag Raisin Bran filled six half gallon jars with, I topped off the jar that he had open. So yes, that was, yeah, that was all of it. Okay. So six half gallon jars and I topped off the one that he had open and three of the uh, Idaho hash browns filled five of the half gallon jars. So now these are all rodent proof, moisture proof, uh, trouble proof basically, and vacuum sealed for long term storage. Long term meaning, you know, over six months. Um, of, you know, these are good indefinitely as long as they're vacuum sealed like this. So there's not really a time limit on them. I will date. Uh, a label and put them on the outside of the boxes. And then I actually take, just because of my space, I will take this box and put it on top of another box like this that I have of the hash browns. And I will do the same with the Raisin Bran. So I just stack them up. I don't go any higher than two because, well, it gets a little dangerous, you know what I mean? But um, they're on the top shelf, which is wasted space for me on, in my pantry. 
and now I've got plenty of both to see us through a good little while. I hope that this was helpful seeing how I store uh, some of the dry goods that I picked up for our long-term food storage and how you can do it too. You can do these in quart jars, you can do it in pint jars, whatever works for you, whatever works for you in your house. Um, I will leave links to everything you see here, probably to the newer model of this. I don't even know if they're offering this one anymore, but there's a newer model that works really good. And if you have a food saver, you just need the hoses and keep an eye on your local thrift stores. They seem to pop up there quite a bit. You just need the hoses to attach to your big food saver. You don't have to have the small handheld one. So you don't need an additional appliance if you don't want one and don't want to spend the money. Um, I have the handheld because I hate lugging the big one out every time I need to vacuum seal something. Vacuum sealing versus dry canning. There's no such thing as dry canning. There is. It's totally unapproved and dangerous. Um, but vacuum sealing is what we're doing here. We are vacuum sealing. Okay. I hope that you guys get an opportunity to vacuum seal some long-term food storage and that you enjoy the fruits of your labors for a good long time. Stock up now while you can. Stock up now while the prices are low. And I hope that this finds you safe and well. Until the next time, remember, be safe.